Hi, welcome to the garden again. And today we are going to explore the number four. Um, get to know, know the score with number four. Number, and for those of you who are new to my channel, what I do in my garden is I try to help plant a lot of seeds about a lot of different ways we can feel and work with the energy of the universe whether it's through a spiritual path or just energetically trying to understand the world around us. And today I'm exploring the number four. I've started, I've done one, two, and three before now, and I'm going to look at the number four in with the aspects of how the highlights, and I mean the really, this is like the world's skimmiest point over astrology on how number four is reflected there, how four is reflected in sacred geometry, how four is reflected in tarot cards, how four is, four is reflected in numerology, and also the angel number four, and then I'm going to talk about the life path number four and its crystal that's aligned with it. Um, if you're new to my channel, please, if you like what you hear, you want to learn more, you want to have a lot of different variety of things. Sometimes I read, sometimes I work with stones, sometimes I work across different disciplines, um, and I will talk about, you know, how I came to do all these different things and know about them just to kind of give you a hint because not everybody likes every discipline. Some people like cards. I have an, a, I started in Tarot when I was 12. And, uh, so I like things that have to do with cards. So what I'm going to do for you today is I have some cards that reflect different disciplines like. I have an astrology deck that has the planets, the houses, the, the, the signs of the zodiac. And I'm taking those cards to use as examples for when we're talking about astrology. So this is the card in that deck that's the fourth house. And the fourth house is your home and your childhood. It's the base. It's where your, all your energy starts to flow from. You see a child's hand and an adult's hand. That's what the fourth house. Now, if you've never seen an astrology chart, and I can't imagine how you wouldn't have, picture a giant pizza that's cut into four, that's cut into 12 equal parts. And we're on the lower part of the pizza. If you started from the left-hand side of the pizza or it was going around the bottom, we're in the fourth slice of that pizza. That's the fourth house. And the way you know what house houses you have on your chart is you need to know your ascendant, which is where the sun was on the horizon at the point that you, when you were born. And I was born at night, but the sun happened to be in Scorpio. If you went out in the big wheel of the universe, that's where you'd see it was. Um, so everybody's, everybody's, you have a sun sign, which is where the day you were born. You have an ascendant, which is where the sun was in the skies when you were born. And those two things together decide where you're, what house things are in. And houses actually have a lot more effect than people say, oh, well, they're a Leo or they're a Taurus or they're a this or they're a that, based totally on their sun sign. And that's really not the whole story. But, you know, that's a lesson for another day. Okay. What sign is the fourth house? The fourth house is most likely assigned if it's a whole chart sign and there's no ascendant you don't know where your sun where the sun was at that point in time then the fourth house is cancer and cancer is called the mother sign it's the huggy sign it's the energy and emotional sensitive caring loving concern about this way the energies in that sign are like how a parent should care about a child in particular a mother's love a nurturing love so it's sort of the nurturing sign, and that then this will make sense. Each one of the signs of the zodiac and the houses has a planet or a some part of the universe, because the moon's not exactly a planet. But the moon is the ruler. The energy of the moon is the ruler in Cancer, and the moon makes you... It's your unconscious, it's your sensitive side, the emotions and responses. A lot like the moon is in the tarot. It's the hidden sides of ourselves. And um, that's a really quick look at the fourth house 
fourth sign and the ruler of that sign, Cancer's uh, planetary ruler is the moon. Um, so, and Cancers have had a kind of a rough few years because uh, another thing called the nodes was screwing with Cancer. And now the nodes have moved on, so it should be easier for my Cancer friends. Now, switching gears, we're going to sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is a view of how uh, the energy in the, in the universe harmonizes with itself. And it uses geometric forms. There's, If you want to, you can go on YouTube, just search sacred geometry. If you've never seen anything about it, want to understand more about it. There's some really wonderful visual shows about explaining how sacred geometry works, but it gets into quantum mechanics and all that stuff, which my uh, husband, Bill, was a physicist, but, um, and dealt with all that stuff. And he would talk to me about it and I would go. And so, but this is interesting because it's about how the energy works with us. So in sacred geometry, the Four is where we have all form all the basis. It's like the basics of energy, and it's it forms like a square. It's a four-sided square symbolically. And if you think about a square, when you think about the triangle, which is in the three, the energy flows around the edge of the triangle really easily. It goes from place to place, place to place. In a square, you're going to hit hard corners. So you're going to go conk, conk. Conk, conk. To make it around and to build the base, you're going to face some challenges. You're going to face some times that you're going to have to stop and rethink. But it has to do, the reason that is, is because it has to do with the material world. It's not just the energetic world. It's actually material things you work with and deal with in this life, like money, like uh, things you physically build, bases you build for yourself even if it's an energetic base you're building for yourself. So that's kind of the number four in sacred geometry. And when I run into it, when I'm building grids, it's usually someone who's in a frequency where they have to build a strong base to begin with. Then they can flower out to six points, eight points, 12 points, all of whom have more harmonious energy flow. But you need that base to start from. It's a really important number. Uh, fours can be very solid. If a four is not solid, if it has a lot of energies in its life that make it not be solid, it 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 will break apart. It will not stand as what it is. Um, tarot. Got cards for you now. Got pictures. Um, the tarot. It's the emperor. It's the building of the physical world. That's what he does. He brings order into that physical world. If you consider you started with a magician, which is your innate breathing energy in your body. The high priestess was at your conscience. Then your mother is in the empress. This is your masculine or your assertive energy in your life. And that's what he stands for. And um, then we're going to go through the four of fours in each of the minor arcana. The Four of Cups, this is a guy sitting under a tree and he's not sure exactly what he wants to do. He's not sure how to build that base. The universe is handing him other ideas. In the case of this um, card, he's not paying much attention. But uh, in some of the cards, it's like a little angel is about to drop it on your head. When you get the Four of Cups, it means that things are changing, evolving, and coming, but the base is going to be built. This is the Four of Swords, and some people say, is that a death card? No, what is it? What it is, is that knight has hung up his swords and he's taking a rest. Um, it's, I actually have a deck of cards called the Housewives Tarot, and the Four of Swords is someone going to a spa. It's taking time out. It's taking time to reconsider where you've been to make sure you're gonna build the right kind of base that you want to have. The Four of Wands is party, party, party. People are talking and communicating. Whatever they're growing, whatever they're doing, they're having a good time doing it. And um, 
they're doing it under the auspices of the powers that be back in the castle there. They know they're having a party and they know it's, they're having a good time and that's just fine with them. Wands are growth and new beginnings. So that that's how that one goes. Now this little guy, the four of coins, looks like a stingy little guy. And he is a stingy little guy. He's holding on to those coins so tightly, he can't really move forward. And when you get too bound in the material world, it doesn't help you either. So that card's always been, I got mine, I'm not sharing with you kind of card. And if he's reversed, it means that, that all that greed and trying to hold on to things and control things didn't work. This also can be controlling energy because pentacles can mean energy. And that can be someone who's a little OCD, has to have everything their way or it doesn't happen. Now, I have another card to give you an idea of how different decks can flavor things. This is the four of coins, four of pentacles. They call them discs. But look at the image of this guy. That's why I actually saw this card and said, I got to get this deck. It's out of print. I had to search around for a while. I finally found one. But he's he's holding on to all those coins. Both hands are tied up. His arms are tied up. And the only way forward is through that door that's locked. And the only way he can get through the locked door is he has to let go of something and pick up the key. So when you're dealing with fours and you're dealing with dealing with the kind of change that building a base that comes with a four in the tarot, it means you're having to accommodate somehow. You're having to figure out a way to get around and to get to it. I love, I just love, love, I love this deck. And this is a deck that cannot, does not want to be read in reverse. And this is another tip about tarot decks. When you see a deck where the back's like the back of these cards, it doesn't matter which way's up or which way's down. Or these cards, up and down, look exactly the same. In this set of cards, I'm holding it so you can see, one side's night, one side's day, and they always want daylight to be up. And when they wrote their descriptions, they didn't give you a reverse in those in that deck. They didn't say, I have a reverse. And I did a show on Tarot and what you, when, how to pick a deck and what to think about it. And uh, that's one of the tips I had. If you don't, I honor what the person who spent the, whose energy came into this universe to create that deck, I honor their understanding of how to read it. Now, going to the to the next topic, four in numerology. And this is going to sound a lot the same, but fours are really important. If you think about it, there's four elements, earth, fire, air, and water. There's four, those, those are the four basics in the universe. And pretty much every culture has had those four basic elements in them. Then there's four seasons, four points on the compass, uh, four major phases of the moon, the new moon, uh, half waxing, full moon, half waning moon. There's a lot of other little interpretations, but basically that's the four, the four seasons of the moon. Um, and uh, it, you know, it's four, four is a very basic founding. If you think of the word, think of the number four, you should see it as a thing that creates foundations. It's also a time when if you're building a false foundation, the energies will come in to make you rethink like the guy sitting under the tree. You got to rethink what you're going to do when you get to that point. The number four in angel numbers is, excuse me, okay, the angels are with you. They send you the number four. So if you see a whole lot of fours, they send you the number four to reassure you that they've heard your prayer and are trying to help you. Um, so they're trying to help you build the foundation. So that's just a tip. People say, well, I see a lot of fours or I see two, two, two or whatever. Anyway, basically, if you see a four, that's what it's saying to you. Now, the crystal -y part of all this, these are both moonstones. And this moonstone is more typical. It looks like moonlight in a stone. 
This one's a little bit darker. You can't, uh, it's not showing well on the screen. It's yellowier. It's more gold and moonlight. But moonstone is the stone of the number four. People said, we want you to tell us about it. Moonstone's good for healing the heart. It ties with the being part of the um, sun sign of cancer, um, the caring, the nurturing, the warmth. That's what a moonstone's for. And, and if you have a moonstone, that's, it's easier to program it to do that. You can program a crystal to pretty much do whatever you want it to, but if it ties to what its original intent is, it'll feel much calmer. Moonstones really calm you down. When I use them in grids, it's normally at a point where someone needs the energy to be calming and to be settling. Um, so that's, that's the number four. And tomorrow I will do the number five. Also, I got a comment. Someone said, how come do you just like not have anything but that black top? Well, the reason I have the black top on is I wear a lot of t-shirts and my t-shirts advertise a lot of things that I don't know those people want to necessarily be advertised on my channel. So I keep this top by me. So when I'm going to do readings or do a recording for you, I throw this top on and then I don't have to worry about you seeing anything underneath that's any of the words or the places I've worked or where to buy your best wine in Dallas, that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, that's why I wear my black top. So no, you don't have to send me clothes. I really do have a whole closet full. But in the last year I've worn, I pulled out a pair of shoes and I went, I've worn those since last February. Um, so, and I've lost so much weight, I'm not sure how much of all those things fit anymore anyway. And this week is a grand cleanup for me. I have to really straighten my office up. I'm going to change out my wall unit to see my see my justice poster back there. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is a justice card in Tarot. Oh, that thought was cute. Um, anyway, that's kind of where I am. If you like the programs, like, subscribe, and comment. If you want to know something about something and you want to say, I w I've always been more interested in like this or some other topic or some particular crystal, let me know because um, I'm always looking for good ideas. I'm working on, if you've never seen it, it's kind of silica and it's called a desert rose and actually the wind carves it out and it actually looks like a little rose, like a fully bloomed rose. They're all over the ground in the west on, and um, I'll show you some other silicas that are similar to it that are sculpted by the wind. They're kind of pretty, kind of fragile but they're, they're lots of fun. Somebody asked about that. You know, she'd gotten one and wanted to know what its significance is. Um, so, you know, any suggestions like that, I, I'm willing to look at it. If I don't think I can handle it, I won't. I'm also looking to uh, bring an astrologer on here to can, in a half an hour, sort of explain to you better how you can use astrology. Um, I've studied just enough astrology to be dangerous and to probably think I understand it when I really don't. Um, and I've seen other people who are talking about Tarot and they really don't know what the hell they're talking about and it makes me nuts. So I don't try to step on other people's fields too much. That's why these are just really quick overviews. And I hope you find them helpful and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.